What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to tell you the first five performance mods that you should do to your R56 Mini Cooper S. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and stick around. You're going to need to watch this whole video. Before I get into this list, uh, you're going to want to make sure before you do any performance mods to your R56, you're going to, or any car really, you're going to want to make sure you have it all your maintenance and your reliability issues taken care of so you know that you can handle the extra performance that you're going to get. I have a video, I'll link it in the description, it's on, the 11, it's on 11 things that you can do to make your R56 Mini Cooper S more reliable. You're going to want to watch that video before you get into these five things that I'm about to tell you. The first modification that I would recommend that you do is your front and rear sway bar. The performance that you get out of the sway bars is by far the best thing I've done in my car since I've had it. And I, I've done quite a bit, I've spent quite a bit of money. If I had to do it over again, that's the first thing I would I would have done. It's not what I did first, but uh, it's for sure the first thing that I would have done. Now, if you're not gonna go as extreme, if you don't ever plan on you know tracking your car or, or, or anything like that, you can get away with just doing the rear sway bar. Um, I would still go with a 22 millimeter if you're going solid or a 25 or 25.5 like I have if you're going hollow. That's what I have. I have a 25.5 hollow bar from Way to Motorworks and I have a 27 millimeter solid bar in the front. Um, it's a H and R, I believe. Um, yeah, it's it's. I went with the rear sway bar first. I drove with it for probably a month on the middle setting because it's, it's three way adjustable, and I loved it. I thought it was the the best thing I, I could have done and then uh, I went I added the front sway bar and once you do the front sway bar it, it's so much better than having just the rear sway bar it's it's um, the amount of gain you get from just adding the rear sway bar from stock is less than half of what you get total from running both running both is just it's hands down night and day different it's just you can't beat it The second mod that I would recommend doing would be a catless downpipe. I have a, mine is from Mario Kart. There's other brands that you can get. Um, I really recommend the Mario Kart downpipe. Uh, I'll link to his information if you want. He doesn't have a website, but I'll, I can give you his email. Um, or you can you can look for him on any of the. His name's Mario Palza. You can search for him on my. He's actually a member of my Facebook group, Mini Cooper DIY. If you go in there and search his name, you'll find him easily, and just ask him. Uh, he, in, in fact, as of today, I just saw on Instagram, he's got um, he's got him in stock for the N14 and the N18, um, both stainless steel and ceramic coated. So, not a bad time to hit him up. But yeah, I'll put his information in the in the description below. Uh, yeah, but Catalyst Downpipe, for both, I mean, not just for power, it's also, your car's going to sound so much better. But, uh, it's a, it's a definitely a, a pretty noticeable gain. You will get a, um, you will get a code when you do the Catalyst Downpipe. Uh, it's kind of annoying to have that check into light, but, uh, once you tune the car, which you're going to want to do eventually, um, it's not one of my five things, but once you tune it'll get rid of your check engine light and eventually you're definitely going to want to do that anyway. The third modification that I recommend is a bigger intercooler. You can go cheap or you can go expensive. The one I have, um, I can't actually find it anymore or I would link to it. It's the G Plus from what well, I got off of Amazon. You can also get them on eBay. It actually works really well, but I, I looked for them the other day so I can link to them on something else. And I just, they're not there. <laughs> At least they weren't when I looked. But uh, yeah, bigger intercooler if you can get, you know, you can get one that's not too expensive or, or if you have the money, buy the more expensive one. I'm actually probably going to upgrade mine just because it does heat soak eventually. And I do, once you do a lot of stop and go driving, when it's over like 100 degrees, it will heat soak. I mean, but what can you expect? It's like 100, I think it's like $160. But uh, performance-wise, it works really well until it heat soaks. And then even when it does heat soak, 
once you start driving, it cools down really fast. So it's it's actually not that bad, and I think if you had methanol injection, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be an issue at all. But I'm still gonna upgrade mine eventually. This is the stock intercooler. Mine's pretty messed up because I don't obviously I don't use it. I've had it off for close to a year. But uh, yeah, see how small that is. When you buy an aftermarket intercooler, it's gonna be about three times the size, and it's just it's way better. You know, just not even just on cooling, it's gonna flow better because it's got more, more air, more space for the air to go. Okay, the fourth thing that I would recommend doing would be camber plates. Uh, it's it's a really big difference once you go from the stock camber plates. I guess they're not they're just the top hats or whatever for the for the struts. But I went with Ireland Engineering fixed camber plates and I get about negative 1.8 degrees of neg of camber and uh, even like that's even already having my sway bars once I put those on it, it was it's it's not as night and day as it is going from no sway bars to front and rear but it's it's a big it's a pretty big difference um, I would definitely oh, obviously I did it and I and I'll do it. I'll do it again. If I if I buy another Mini Cooper, I will buy camera plates. Except uh, when I go, eventually I will go to coilovers on this car, and then I'll put a uh, adjustable camera plates. But for now, these Ireland Engineering fixed camera plates for a daily driver, a car that you're not gonna be taking on the track, uh, they're perfect. You don't you don't really need more than negative 1.8 unless you're going for like a look. But for handling and driving on the street, they're they're almost perfect. So, I, in fact, if I uh, buy a fixed camera plates, I'll probably start out at like negative two degrees just to, you know, see how that works before I even adjust. So that's what the Ireland Engineering camera plates look like. You can see they're not center because they're... Also, these holes are slotted. I didn't slot them, that's just how they come. So you want to push them as far this way towards the inside of the engine bay as you can to get as much camber as possible. But I did that, and you don't have to put two bolts on there. I just did because these came with bolts and I already had to set the cam stock on the car. I just threw them on there. But uh, yeah, minus 1.8 degrees of camber. Collects a little bit of dirt, but oh well. But yeah, they're also these are made with genuine BMW parts. So uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty high quality. You can see how thick that piece of metal is. But yeah, they're definitely, I would say they're better quality than the OEM plates that are on here that I took off. And I'm really happy with them. The fifth thing that I'd recommend doing would be tires. Tires are going to be a, a bigger bang than all the other stuff you did probably. Especially getting rid of uh, run flats and going to like a summer performance tire not just a any regular tire you want to go to a performance tire mine because when i switched my tires i went from just whatever was on here that were bald when i bought the car and it was winter time so i bought so i have dws 06 continental dws 06 tires and they're pretty they're good winter tires i wouldn't call them the best they're obviously well they're not the best summer tires but for the winter and you know i live up in the mountains we get Quite a bit of rain up here we average 46 inches a year plus it snows every once in a while these tires actually work in the snow we don't get a lot of snow i'm only at 2,000 feet but uh, in the little bit of snow we get a couple inches um they work fine but uh yeah if you put you go to summer tires your car is going to handle way better than that's going to be a bigger bang than than the sway bars probably on handling and, and you know probably more than coilovers but uh, I would recommend doing the other performance or the handling stuff first so you see how your car will handle at lower speeds before you put the tires on. If you, uh, if you put good tires on and your car, you, you don't know how your car handles or rotates, and then you put the sway bars on, you got to be going a lot faster to get your car to rotate. And it's just better to learn that stuff at slower speeds than, than you can put the stickier tire or the softer tires on so that you can 
you know, go faster and know what your car is going to do. Because you don't want, like I said, you don't want to learn that your car is going to rotate at a certain, doing when you're doing a certain thing when you're going too fast because you'll crash. Also, it's it's not a bad idea. It's a really good idea to have both winter tires and summer tires. You don't just want one tire year round. Like these w, DWS 06s are good for the winter. You know, then uh, you're going to want to find something that works good in the summer in your area or even in the winter. So, I mean, these DWS 06s probably don't work good if you go any further up the mountain than I live now. So, if you get a lot of snow, you're probably going to want, you know, winter tires, not all season tires. But yeah, uh, just do some research, see what people are, are uh, running in your area, and see what people are recommending in your area for tires. Don't, you know, don't just go off of what somebody on YouTube says. Make sure that it's going to work with the conditions that you're driving in. No matter which Mini Cooper you drive, I have a Facebook group. It's called Mini Cooper DIY. You should check it out. If you know a lot about minis, we could use you in there to answer questions. We're getting a lot of questions in there now. In fact, the last week I've had over a hundred people join, averaging about eighty week before eighty a week before that. Now you know over a hundred, so that's a it's growing really fast. And I'm mentioning it on all these videos, so it's going to keep growing faster. So I'd definitely check it out. And if you, you know if you have questions, post them. There's a lot of people in there that know quite a bit about Mini Coopers because you know. It's a, it's a DIY group. People are working on their own cars, so chances are any question you have, somebody has already done it. They might even be in the middle of doing it right now, and they got fresh answers for you right off, you know, maybe even with pictures. So, yeah, definitely check out Mini Cooper DIY. I'll link to it in the description. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down and I'll catch you in the next video.